Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to What's the 411. I am so happy that you guys are all here to join me tonight. Um, it is Monday. It is June 29th, the end, literally, of June. Can you believe it? We have one more day in June and one more day in our 30-day challenge. Wow, hasn't that come up quickly, right? So we're super excited um, about our conversation today with Joshua Frazier and his father, DeWitt Frazier, but of course, um, we are excited, of course, about, like, you know, just about everything. We're excited about the end of the month. We're excited about hearing all about Joshua Frazier and his experience as a, you know, champion, as a, like, world-class champion. I was doing a bit of research, and I'm like, this guy has gone all over the place. Like, he's gone all over the world, and he is just knocking people out everywhere you go so we're interested in hearing all about your journey all about your experience so whenever you are ready i'm going to send an invite to join the conversation so that we can get it on and started right now very excited guys hey hello 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 how are you i'm good how you doing i'm doing very very good very good. So um, you got to introduce yourself, you know, tell okay. the world who you are. Well, um, I guess for everyone that doesn't know me and, and for yourself, you know, after after all the research, shoot, thank you. Um, is it is Ellie? Is Ellie, right? Yes. yes. All right, Ellie. Um, so I'm Joshua Fraser, born and raised in uh, Brampton, Ontario. My dad, my dad's from Jamaica. My mom's from uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. And um most of my life, I grew up in Brampton. A few years in high school, I've spent moving around the city. I went to uh, Houston, Texas for a little bit of high school and uh, Richmond, Indiana, playing sports on uh, high school scholarships. And as well as just, I'm an uncle. I'm an uncle of three. And um, I don't know really what to say about myself. I'm a boxer. I'm I'm a aspiring world champion, aspiring Olympian at the moment. And... Um, just, just you know, a young guy just coming up in the community, I guess. You know, for the people that don't know me, I'm just quiet, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, so what other sports were you into in high school? So throughout, like, high school, I played mainly football and basketball, but basketball was my main focus. Um, I got a couple of scholarships, and I went to school with a few other guys like Anthony Bennett. And I, in Branton, we had a few guys that did make it to the NBA, so I was I had the fortunate of, uh, I was fortunate to grow up around them. So uh, basketball and football mainly. Um, boxing was always a uh, after-school thing we did. Like when mom couldn't take care of us, we got sent to the gym. Or if, if we just need to spend some time with dad, we're at the gym. Wow. So when did you fall in love with boxing? Um, so I remember actually putting up the – like, like lacing on the gloves and getting in the car to go sparring. I was probably about 11 years old. It was the first time I really – went somewhere and trained with someone else. And, you know, what's really um, cool is that kid now is still boxing ever since he was about six or seven years old. So wow. the community is really small. And uh, I was about, well, probably since I could lace up gloves, but since I really um, had a choice and, you know, told my dad I wanted to do it, it was 11. And then I re-picked it up after that day. I got hit with a low blow and I didn't box again until I was about 18. So 18 mm -hmm. or 20. Yeah, but it's... Uh, it's a rough sport. You will get hit, but it's it's a lovely sport too. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, how is it training with your dad? You know, your dad is a world class champion himself. You know what I'm saying? Right. How is that tra yeah. training with him? It's uh, it's actually it's it's not stressful at all. It's it's a it's a really good relationship we have because I'd say before boxing, um. I was traveling to go play basketball. My dad would go with his fighters. So sometimes we weren't together on weekends. But most games, all my games, and I have two older brothers. Well, yeah, I have two older brothers as well. We're all two years apart. So with boxing and everything else, he kind of balanced really well. He was at a lot of our games. So he was always there coaching me um, from the sideline. Or if I was a little kid and I happened to wake up at 4.30, 5 in the morning, and I can catch him for, like, one of those team runs, he used to let me just run around with him and the team anyway. So... 
it actually feels quite great winning with, you know, a family member and not only your father, you get to win. And it's rough when we lose together because you always want to win. But it's a lovely relationship when it when everything's running smooth. It's great. That's good. That's amazing. Yeah. So you definitely have to talk about all your accomplishments. Like, how <laughs> does it make you feel? You know? Boxing has been... Um, Boxing has been pretty crazy because all my accomplishments I've done within about a four-year, five-year span. Yeah. Um, so I'd say me and my dad, which is my coach, you know, for the people who don't know, we sat down. And um, actually, funny, the kid that I first sparred, Jake Daouz, he just he just jumped in the, the chat. So what's up, Jake? Um, <laughs> I, so I was saying, uh, sorry to jump off track, but um, accomplishments, I started off uh, local tournaments. I won Brampton Cup my first year. And uh, pretty much every tournament that I was allowed available to go to. So we have bronze gloves, silver gloves, and I won a novice golden gloves. Um, after that, uh, I took a, a, quite a bit of a break to go back and play basketball and everything. And then up until this last little four or five year cycle, I've been really focused on winning the Olympics and just bringing Jamaica their first gold medal uh, as an Olympic medal. And my achievements, I've won three golden gloves, three silver gloves. Um, I, I'm the current uh, Caribbean champion of the 2019. I, uh, 2019 Jamaican champion, 2018. Uh, 2017 Canadian champion and best boxer. I'm also the best boxer of the Caribbean championships. And I also won best boxer at um, Brampton Cup. I won, uh, yeah, I won quite a few best boxers, which is well, something that we also you. planned for. Yeah. But it's like, when you go to the tournament, winning gold is like the top accolade is, is, is winning best boxer as well as winning gold. So oh, we've got quite a few accomplishments. I'm top 20 in the world as well in my weight class. And uh, we're just doing a thing. It feels really good. Like you did ask me how I feel about the accomplishments. Yeah. Um, it does feel good. But at the same time, I remember sometimes I wanted, I, I didn't really get to like enjoy them. I was always so eager to get on to the next Golden Gloves or the next major event. Um, I realized I didn't enjoy them and then I got injured and I realized I, I have to enjoy every single moment of life. So I've been taking it a little bit slower now and we're a little bit more patient with the progression of, of my journey, I guess I can say. Wow. Well, congratulations. You definitely you. are blowing it out of the water right now. You are going strong for four years. You're coming. Yeah. Back. You're doing big things. Big, Cheerful. big Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, like, what is it like being in the ring? So, for anyone that's probably never been hit before or any hit anyone, like someone like that, it's going to be really nerve-wracking for you to get in the ring because you're not the type of person that would like to hit someone nor get hit. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people that you see growing up fighting all the time. They kind of <laughs> love the ring. They love that, uh, the energy, the thrill. For me, I grew up in... The boxing family um i'm really comfortable in the ring i can uh when i'm boxing I, I can look out and talk to my mom you know when she's on the sideline and I'm, I'm very comfortable in the ring but for someone else uh and i'm almost 100 fights in now so it's like now every single fight i get a little bit of nerves right before like right before i go in there but once i hear the bell go or once i step foot through the ropes it kind of shakes off and i feel good again because it's pretty much the same uh, four corners as back home and everywhere else. It rings the same. So mm -hmm. it, uh, it's nerve-wracking at first. But uh, I, I'm almost putting in my 10,000 hours now as for, like, how many time I've put into training. So, like, fine-tuning. And like you said, the world class is really coming about now. So um, I'm, I'm comfortable, but at the same time, nerves are a little bit good for everything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what would you say is, like, the best thing about boxing? Right, right. So most people would probably think I'd say, like, the winning is the best thing about boxing. Or, like, for some people that don't know about amateur boxing, we don't get paid. But there's a lot of sponsorship and endorsements included. That's really the main part. But um, when I um, – when prior to a fight, months before when we start training for the fight, I, I we make a plan, and when I actually decide to – deep down inside myself, make a plan when I'm training to do. And when it's fully executed in the fight and it's executed properly and it, feel, it feels like a, like a Sinatra, like it's like music. It just feels like everything you plan to do months before happened just how you thought it would happen. 
And like I've I've planned to to go and win gold medals and win best boxer like in Poland and some of these tournaments. And when you actually do it and you know with your coach by your side, it feels amazing just to manifest the the actual outcome, you know. And it happened because like if you, if if you're training and you're only thinking about winning, you, you may come up short when the fight gets tough. But if if you're thinking about everything that can possibly happen in the moment of the fight, you're pretty much prepared for every outcome. So I'd say when I manifest the fight like two, three months before and I go in there and I still still stay motivated and, and I keep the plan on check and make it happen, uh, no matter where, I'm, where I am in the world, that feels, that feels like luxury to me. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So you were just talking about like deep down inside, inside yourself, you know, you plan to win, basically. Like what right. does that plan look like for you? Like how do you do that? It's not necessarily a written plan for me. More so for my coach, it might be a written plan. Um, maybe I could, if I was a more individual fighter, I would write all this stuff down. Or maybe when I'm a more end of product, I'll write all this stuff down. Um, but uh, basically, when I get in the gym, I'll kind of just decide. Um, sometimes coach watches who I, who I may fight, depending on how early we get, like, a schedule on the, t on the boxing shows and stuff. But um, mainly just actually knowing yourself what you're capable of doing good and then while you have the time to fine tune what you're bad at you basically just do what you what you're really good at in the ring and make sure you stick to your own protocol and just react could not necessarily react to what's happening but don't get hit and just keep doing the hit and would be the best <laughs> sense to tell you know it would be the best sense to uh kind of work into your game plan okay so. okay so like, so you were talking about things that, you know, balancing what you're good at from what you're not good at. Like, what are some of the challenges that you have to overcome while doing boxing? So I would say one of the biggest challenges in boxing is um, like your personal self is like you as because uh, we can set so many limits and stuff for ourselves. You may not perform properly under stress or there's some people that perform very well under like what we call is the bright lights or when it's game night they perform really well so um i just say mainly the mental aspect is is a huge part as um as well as just i don't know man sometimes you have to dig deep and just fight in there you know and just give it all you got and that's just like really trusting yourself in the process and knowing yourself because if you don't believe in yourself you'll never really do it or achieve it and actually, when even if you do win and you didn't believe in yourself, you didn't do it to your highest uh, ability, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think just someone's trying to heal you up here. Somebody from Trinidad's trying to heal you up out here. Nicholas, Nicholas, big shout out, Nicholas. This WBC, <laughs> one of the WBC little men. He, he he's the most knowledgeable guy I've met on um, boxing, other than you know my coach and some of the the older guys in the game. He sends me stuff all day. I love him. I appreciate your yeah. your help, brother. <laughs> um so how do you stay focused actually um being at home having my father here and growing up with uh i'd say my dad's a really focused man other than being uh, a coach and an olympian himself he kind of has his priorities set up he writes a lot of things down uh he organizes himself and he's taught me to do it and i've seen him doing it so sometimes he'll tell me what he's doing so i know just uh, my dad would tell me, like, hey, you're coming to the gym all week. We're going to do this or we're going to do that. And I'm, I don't really like when stuff pops up on me, but I guess I'm ready for it because it's always going to happen. So we just kind of I know I'm in the gym at least five, six days a week. So that's cool. I, I love spending time in the gym. But uh, some days it gets rough because the training the training is not the easiest thing. Yeah, I can imagine. I just, so. I mean, I think writing things down uh, and kind of having it on paper has helped me because we made a, a more of a, a five-year plan. Okay. Or I'd say maybe like a six or seven-year plan, but we made a five-year five, five year plan and four years of that is going to be the Olympic cycle. So basically, prior to, I, I was kind of just going through winning local tournaments and golden gloves and championships that are, I could, are local. And now I can fight international and... I'm actually seasoned enough and I'm ready to win an international tournaments for Jamaica and Canada and for me and us. So oh. it feels good. 
definitely must feel good, man. Um, so what do you, what keeps you motivated? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I was saying I have a few, like I have a, I have a nephew now who's, who's around all the time. And my my mom's also like a PSW. She's almost like a nurse. So she's constantly working. Like since I was a little kid, I remember her working, um, doing house calls and, you know, doubles sometimes now more than ever. She's doing doubles more now than ever before. Mm -hmm. But um, just like my family kind of motivates me because I see how hard they work. And it always reminds me that, you know, if they can do it, maybe I can do a little bit harder or a little bit, you know, go a little bit further. So... I see how hard they work and they put in those at least six, seven hours a day. So I try to fill my day a little bit more than it's filled now. Mm. I, I guess family, family is my motivation. I guess it's, it's, I have a big family too inside the gym and around boxing and just like my blood family as well. They're everyone's really supportive. For sure. I mean, why not? You look like you're doing amazing things, so they definitely have to support you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they try. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so what do you do on your spare time? Spare time? <laughs> I like I, I play a lot of video games and stuff like that, but I was really just trying to find a hobby now, kind of, because so long ago, like almost 10 years now, boxing was my hobby where I would go and kind of relieve stress on, on the bag and in the gym. So now I, I try to do a little bit of drawing here and there. And I just kind of like video games all the time now, I guess. If I'm not doing nothing, it's, it's good to stay in the, in, the, in, the cold, in the cold air, I guess I should say. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, what have you learned about yourself? Like you were doing basketball before, football, and you said you were boxing kind of like in your spare time. So what have you learned now that you're full-time boxing, you're doing this, you're running towards the Olympics? Like, what are you learning? I, I really did learn that in the end, you know, uh, a solid education. Because at the end of the day, I've been injured a few times. And um, I've had a lot of people around me that, that, that can guide me, which I'm grateful for. I have a lot of great mentors. But um, basically falling back on a good education because in the end of the day, it's still a business. Like you may be in the amateurs, but once you get really good at it and you're at a high level, it becomes not necessarily re like main focus of business. But when you get to the top 1%, 10%, you want to go on to the next level. So it becomes a business mindset. And um, when you're uneducated, you tend to shy away from things that you're not comfortable with. I, sh I mean, I should say, I guess. So certain things I'm not comfortable with, like running my website, um, I, I found that I don't do it comfortably and I don't do it, I guess, as, as confident as I should be doing it mm -hmm. because I lack knowledge in it, I guess. I don't just jump into it. And, but but I, should, um, I should just say, you know, keep going with the flow and sticking with it and always staying gritty, you know, uh, it helps. Just, yeah. just falling back on the education, too, and uh, never giving up on yourself. Because no matter what sport you're in, no matter what industry you're in, um, when you fight for yourself, it's, it's bigger than just a pride thing. Because, you know, if you don't stick up for yourself, how do you know if anyone else will stick up for you? So knowing that you have your own back and actually believing in yourself, like I could say, you know, I'm going to be the best in the world. But very few people know what it takes to be the best in the world. And if you can push yourself to become the best in the world, I guess um, we have very few limits in yourself, I should say. Very true. Very mm -hmm. true. Um, so, like, what are your goals for the future? Okay, so um, I did, well, winning, winning, uh, uh, being an Olympian and winning, winning gold at the Tokyo 2021 Olympics is going to be the main focus of the goal, but there's some time in between now. We still have about a year and uh, there's a world championship coming up in Belgrave, Russia. I want to, I want to be there. I want to be a medalist, uh, uh, Serbia. Sorry. I want to be a, a top medalist. Like I, I always train to go for number one, but I realized that shooting for higher and, and, and farther above and you just fall a little bit short, you'll be number one. So, there's world championships, another Jamaican nationals I would like to win. I would like to be a best boxer again for Jamaica, 
and just represent right this time. Um, and then, you know, the trials. I want to do very well at the trials. I want to make it through a full trials. I've, I've been to quite a few trials where I've made it to the semis. Um, and I've made it to the top eights and the top 30, you know, the top eights out of 32 in the 32 countries. And it's just uh, just finishing it up, you know, getting these last few years done. And I, I do want to go professional, which we're going to do. Um, and I have goals that I want to accomplish as a professional, like winning a world title in the, the WBO, WBC, IBF, IBO section of, of these are like major titles, major world titles. I want to get a piece of all of those. And um, I just want to stay a little bit grounded. So, cause the Olympics is going to be rough, but I'm, I'm pretty much ready for the future. I would, uh, there's a few belts I want to get. And then just the Olympian is, is one of the biggest things I, I could do for, for myself and for my, my uh, country, I guess. My goodness. So um, what does it take to train for the Olympics? Like, what are you doing specially to train for that? So uh, like we were saying, the, um, a lot of people say, you know, boxing is like 20% physical and they say like 80, 90% mental, like 10% like physical and like 90% mental. So I find that really picking up my cardio drills um, during this COVID and quarantine has helped. Um, just maintaining what has been working in the past. So not missing any sessions. And if I have time to put in an extra session, that's really been helping me out. Talking to other Olympians, making sure if I, if I do feel like I'm off track, I put myself right back on track because time, time is, is always ticking. So Staying on focus has helped me a lot. And just my team. I have a great team around me. Um, one of my friends, like I said, Jake Daoust, that I sparred when he was about seven. I was probably 11. He just went professional prior to this uh, whole pandemic. So he's professional now. Um, Melinda Watpool at my gym, at our gym, she's a five-time female uh, national champion. So the, the team around me, I have a lot of people around me that do um, very great things. And we have similar similar goals in the end to go to the Olympics. And hopefully, I hope they want to get their, their gold medals for their country, which which is good because we all um, feel each other's flames as for motivation in the gym. So my team around me is very important. Um, so your team around you, physical team, uh, medical team around me is very important. My business team, they help me. They take a lot of stress off my back. Um, and just like, Coach, coach, my dad is is, is uh, huge, and my mom because they hundred percent support me. So like I live at home, and I'm I'm allowed to uh, actually pursue my dreams, and I, and it's not just like it's my job now. You know what I mean? So it, it's a uh, it's a big deal. Wow, awesome. Um, so you're talking about the pandemic a little bit earlier. Yeah. Like, how has that affected? you obviously positively because you said you're putting in more work you know you have a little yeah. bit more time but what else has it done to change your life a bit um it it uh time alone kind of helps me i guess it should help everyone but when you're in like small seclusion with you just yourself to get in your own feelings and really talk to yourself i had uh the time like i said my family's really deep and there's a lot of us. So just staying connected with everyone and finding just a moment to remember who helped me like five years ago when I had nothing. And like, I could tell people what I wanted to do. And they're like, bro, you don't even box. I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna be a world champ. They're like, you don't even box. Like, how, how can you be a boxer? You don't box. So I was like, all right. And then we jumped into the game and we're on our way to doing things that we want to do. Um, yeah, I guess the, the quarantine helped me realize that, you know, you got to stay remember who was there for you when, when you weren't even there for yourself kind of thing. It remember it reminded me who was always there for me. So it was good. It was, it was good. And I just, I had some injuries. So the time, the time being has just been great. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. So, I mean, it's, it's, it is a pandemic. So, you know, I, I feel really bad for everyone that's affected by it, but um, some people did need some time, which we don't get as humans. We usually don't get time. True. So uh, the the time and just the, the realization that, you know, everyone's always here for me, I guess. That's good. Um, so uh, 
you seem very motivated. Like you've got a great head on your shoulders. You are focused. You know where you're going and how you're going to get there. So that's right. awesome. Um, I would just like to ask you, like, is there any advice you would give to any young um, males or females out there who are looking to go in the same direction as you, maybe in boxing or in any other sport or in any avenue in life, period? Mm -hmm. So one thing I like to, to kind of give advice if I do is that we all go through our fights. We all go through our battles. And you don't want to go through wars so much in life. So you want to be, you want to do your due diligence. So, I mean, you want to study. Whatever you're into, you want to study. Really study it and understand it. And um, take the time and have the patience to learn whatever industry you're in. So if you're a boxer or an athlete, learn that uh, to get in that industry. Find out what you have to do to sign up. Find out what you have to do to get into tournaments. Even though your coaches should be doing that, um, find out what the rules are of your sport and of your industry. Find out who is the best at it and and try to model yourself around the best models in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of just took all the best world champions I've ever seen and just watched them and just watched them and listen to what they say and how they act and kind of help me become a better me in my industry. So I'd say, and just go all in. Like if you could fall asleep and dream it, it was made kind of for you because that's, that's your DNA. So if you can fathom it and believe it, go for it. Just find out, just go for it in the right way, you know, don't be scared and find out people that have already done it so it can make it easier for yourself. Mm. So what are, what is your class, I guess? Like when you box, what's your class? <laughs> so I'm what they call is like a welterweight in the amateur division. But I believe in professional, it's a junior middleweight, which is, I'm a, I fight at 152 pounds. So it's the 69 kg uh, weight class. So I'm the welterweight Caribbean champion. Um, 2019 Jamaican uh, welterweight champion, they would say, or 69 kg champion. Okay. So I fight at 152 pounds. I'm about 6'4", so I'm, I'm pretty big for the weight class. Wow, that's amazing. And then how old are you right now? I just turned 26 in January, so I'll be 20, 27 next year. And uh, we'll be moving into the professional ranks and working. And I'll be a prize fighter and... Uh, most definitely, you know, 2021 Olympian by then. Damn. Everything so, goes um, well. Yeah, of course. And so, um, like, what, what does it mean to be professional? Like, what's the difference? So, professional. Um, I didn't really understand why my coach and my, well, my dad and my coach and my team kind of kept me in the amateur ranks for so long. My dad was saying, you haven't really put your time in. So, you haven't put your time in enough to know what it's like in certain situations in the ring, I guess it would be the same in business as for like, you haven't done your, your time as for, you haven't studied the business enough to know how to run it. Right. Um, I would say just being professional about your business is, is to really know what you stand for, your core values, know what your brand is really about and to have it ran clean and properly um, and promptly you know, ethically. Uh, I don't really know how to put it professionally as well, but, like, to be professional is to, to do it right, I guess. Okay. Yeah, and make lots of money. You get paid <laughs> for it. Oh, so you get paid in prof when you're... Well, I guess when you're a professional, you get paid. Yeah, I'd be a prize fighter. So when I go pro, I'd be a prize fighter. Um, at the moment, we can take uh, donations and stuff, but they have to go back to my boxing so, like, everything has to help me with boxing. I see. I yeah. see. Okay. So, somebody has a question for you here. How many um, fights have you have you got already, champ? I think I'm at about 90, <sighs> 92 fights. Wow. And I've only got about 15 loss, 16 loss. Ooh. Oh, I, I have, like, 10 losses. My fault. <laughs> I have about 80, 80 wins, 10 loss. Wow, that is amazing. Good for yeah. you, man. Definitely Thanks. good for you. Big up yourself Thanks. on that, man. That's huge. I appreciate huge. it, L. Yeah, so um, where can we find out more about you now? 
Oh, okay. So, like, if you're trying to find any information on me, uh, most people don't know I have a website. It's named right after me, uh, joshuafraser.com. You can find some blogs on me and stuff that I personally write. Uh, they'll give you personal insight on my life and boxing. There's some should be some upcoming news after this whole pandemic's over. We'll 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 refresh that up. Uh, just accolades. My email. If anyone is really trying to connect with me on like a business level or just send me content, um, possible sponsorship or just help me out or even wants to just say hello, I have an email. You know, my email is Fraser, like my last name, jboxing at gmail.com. And um, basically just Instagram. Instagram me at uh, my name. You can put my name right in, Joshua Fraser. I'll come up. Um, or Jay Fraser Boxing on any anything, Instagram, Twitter. And Facebook, you'll find me. Awesome. And or so you can come to the gym. Come down to the gym, 1590 Dundas Street, Mississauga. I'm there all the time. Yeah, so when did you guys open back up? Uh, we we had to set up, like, a pretty big protocol, you know, get all the signs, get all this, uh, the spacing measures set up, and know, know how we're going to clean up everything. So we opened up last week, I believe. Okay. Yeah. We got all our paperwork in. There's there's about 120 gyms and only about tw maybe less than 20. 20 of them are, are open, so it's wow. pretty busy over there. I could imagine everybody was probably trying to get back into the gym, right? They missed it. Yeah, I heard the the, like, the big franchises aren't open yet either. They're just a little too big, I guess, to open. Yeah, it's a lot of work, too. It's a lot of work. Yeah, El Ellie, how long have you been uh, doing this? Um, I interviewed your dad, you know, last year around this time. So okay. I just started interviewing since 20, I guess, 2018, November. So it's just been over two years. Yeah. Still fairly new. Who would you, well, I probably wouldn't know who they'd be, but who would you say was one of your more exciting interviews so far? Um, every sing. you know what? Every single person has a story mm -hmm. and everybody's story is interesting. Wow, yeah. yeah. It honestly is. Like, that's what keeps me continuing to do this and reaching out to different, different people because I feel like everybody's story is so interesting. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yes. Um, but especially from right here in Ontario, in Toronto, like, there's so many people that we have that just look like regular people walking up and down the street that have an, a crazy story, you know, to their right. lives, And they're doing huge things, just like you. Like, you are doing major things out here. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't, they don't know, you know? No. So, yeah, I just like to shed light on all that. That's amazing. I like what you're doing. I was looking, like, because I hadn't really heard heard much about you, and I was just, I was looking through your page and everything, so I was like, it's cool, you know, you've been active with it, you know, you're doing this weekly. Yes. So all of my <laughs> interviews that I've done previously were not recorded or anything. They were just on the radio because I was doing the radio show. And then nice. because of the pandemic, I ended up being at home. And I'm like, you know what, I better get on Instagram like everybody else and try to, you know, do a right. thing. But it's actually working out good because I could I could record these and they are posted on my page so everybody can go <laughs> back and view them. So it's good. Yeah, my group, my guys, a couple of my guys said they're following you. So this is perfect. Awesome. They reach out now. Yes, got a lot of love today. When we put out your picture, everybody was like, yo, bear lights, <laughs> bear, everybody was, you know, hopping <laughs> on. So I know this is going to be one of the most interesting, uh, more viewed uh, interviews that I have for sure. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So I want to thank you. But first, before I speak to your dad, I want to ask you if there is any, like, quote that you kind of go by on a daily basis that keeps you running so maybe i well i kind of do go by it on a daily basis i had it written on my wall but kind of it kind of i covered it up a little bit now but um there was a saying my friend andrew saw there had said to me maybe about three years ago and it was a saying like he used to say today i will live like no one else so that tomorrow i can live like no one else and I had to say it back in my head, say it back in my head like three, four times. And then like a month, two months later, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not like my friends. I have to live different and I want different things in them. And obviously I have to put in a different amount of time. So it allowed me to realize that we are all different. And if you want to live different, you got to live different. So that was that's, a good one for me. That's definitely a good one. Yeah. Definitely a good one.
So thank you so much for jumping on and participating with me and doing the back and forth. I truly appreciate it. And you have to big up yourself, man. You are doing major things out here. Thank you. Thank you for this time. Wow. You are definitely doing great things. We can't (laughs) wait to see you in the Olympics. We're rooting for you. Yeah. So like, hopefully I have some things around local that happens before, but unlikely it's kind of our last year. We'll be doing kind of major events. But I'll be I'll be going pro by the end of the year, and most definitely 2021 will be out here. Uh, all right, I can't wait yeah, to see thank, you. <laughs> thank you for this time. Thank you everyone that's watching. Appreciate you guys watching, and just stay tuned to 416 Love. You know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Coach is right here. Oh, yeah. what's up? How right are here. you? I'm doing well. That's good. Long time yes. no see. It's been a while. It's been a while. So how's yes, everything going? How's the pandemic treating you? <laughs> you know, the pandemic is okay because I'm home, I'm home with my son and I got to, we get to work out. You know, we don't have to distance because we're family. <laughs> and so uh, that's been a big plus. Awesome. Wonderful. Yes. So um, let's, first of all, I'd like you to just introduce yourself for everybody who's um, just hopping on or doesn't know who you are. Okay, I'm Dwight Fraser. Um, I do run a gym in uh, Mississauga, Dwight Fraser Boxing and Fitness. I am also a two-time Olympic coach, and uh, I make my living in boxing. So, you know, it's given me an opportunity to mentor a lot of young people and also to teach uh, sweet science, which I love, because I was an Olympian when I was young. And it's a sport that is not only taking me around the world, but also introduced me to people I would never have met any other way. Uh, so it's been very, very, I've been very fortunate. Awesome. Awesome. So you definitely got to tell us how it feels to be training your son in this sport that you excelled in, you know, that you love, you have this passion for. How does it feel? You know, it's exciting, uh, you know, because seeing someone following your footstep and uh, he's uh, more talented than I was. And he's also, to watch him in action, it's a joy. You know, um, it's like watching something you love in action. So, and it's your very own, so it's more special. But it has its ups and downs because I have to separate that time being a father from being a coach. I have to give him space to uh, be an athlete, a space to be young, and a space to do things that um, even if I know the end result, I have to allow him to experience those moments. And so it's, it can be difficult because uh, it's your blood. Um, so the emotions are there and not like somebody else's child. Okay. So how do you balance that then father versus coach? (laughs) Well, when they were young, I used to travel with them. So I would take them along with the team and Mm -hmm. lots of time I took them because I want them to see what I do, but I also want to spend time with them. So they were able to go to to hotels, uh, go to swimming pools, enjoy and go to restaurants and just become a part of the team when they were very young. Yeah. And I think that gave me an opportunity to, for them to see me as a coach and also as a dad. And so now it's very similar. There is, when he's in the gym, um, he's not treated any different. He's treated the same as anyone else. He's allowed to be silly and does things that the other boxers do. And uh, it's, um, he's a good student. It's really easy to train. And uh, I've been very fortunate over the years to have a lot of Olympians, and they all have the same similar thing. I, my job is to keep them from overworking because they truly like to work. Mm-hmm. And they don't see it as work, they see it as play. And uh, I have to keep them, I have to say, enough today, it's time to go home. Because uh, they need to come back eager and ready and not tired. But the hardest thing is to keep him down from working. He loves to train. Mm. Wow. Well, he certainly has a solid head on his shoulders and he knows what he sees in his future for himself. So you definitely have done a great job, you know, representing as a father for him. Um, But what do you see personally in your son's future? His future is unlimited. I don't, I don't know what that limit is because there is no limit. He's extremely talented. He's left-handed. He's extremely tall. 
Um, in all the bouts I've seen him in, I've never seen him in trouble. I've never seen him get hurt. Um, he's never been out of place. I mean, I've seen him with people who are, you know, five times his experience, and it's like they're on the same level. Um, I do have a really good team around me, not just myself. Uh, the staff I have around me, not only financially, but we have a medical staff. We have different coaches that help me also. And we have, he has, when we started, it was me and him. There is now 15 people on our staff, and it's still growing from a photographer to a social media person to, and I can tell you there is more to come because, uh, you know, when they speak about it take a village to raise someone, it also take a village to raise an athlete because a lot of people realize I can't, like, I can't be everywhere and everyone. Mm -hmm. So we have different people to work with different part of him because he has a physio person. He has somebody that's stretching before he works out. He has a strength train coach. He has, you know, from photography to media. And um, sometimes it's very frustrating because he said to me, Dad, I can't be myself. I said, you are going to be yourself. All we're doing is correcting you so you don't make errors that can prevent your future to be in problem later. So sometimes we struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Because I said to him, you can be yourself to a limit. Because as you know, I just heard him say, he's not like his friends. And he's not. He can't be like his friends because he's out to a higher standard. And uh, I'm very fortunate that uh, I've been blessed with a lot of good people around me. And also my experience worldwide has allowed me to see what not to do and what to do. Mm. You know. So as like a black male in our community, how important do you think it is to support your son in what he wants to do? Well, I think, uh, I don't know if it's only in my culture, but uh, I think in all cultures, parents sometimes forget that it's not their life they live in. They have to, love, they have to allow their kids to live their life. All our, all our kids have different dreams. And we have to, what we have to do is to give them the forum to pursue that dream. Yeah. And we should do everything in our power to assist them and to make them realize those dreams. Um, we're not supposed to babysit them, but we're also supposed to support them. Because if, you, if we can't support our own, nobody else should support them. Mm. You know, support come from first start from you. This is my son. Whatever he needs, I have to assist him. And I, I, will, I say to people, you know, I, will, I would rather not pay the government and pay my son than pay the government. A lot of people think of the opposite where they take care of society and not themselves. When I need support, my son is always going to be there. If I take care of society and other people, um, when I need them, they won't be there. You have to take care of those who are there. And your, your loved ones, your family, your community, they come first. And you have to support them. And even if they do dumb things, you may not have to support them in public. You can take them behind doors and tell them later on, don't do that. But you need to support them. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't don't try to mock them in public or do anything. You know, my son, I will never, even when he makes a mistake in public, I will never in public say something. I'll take him aside later and say, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And I think our culture have to learn to do that because other cultures have learned to do that very well. Mm -hmm. Because all cultures make mistakes. We seem to um, not assist our own one when we make mistakes. And we think, we try to punish them. And I don't know why we do that. But we need to support our own all the time. That is very true. Um, how important is that you're speaking a message right here? Like how important is that for us to learn to support our own community? Well, it's your home. It's your support. When, when you need help, who do you go to? It's those people you're closest to. And uh, you can't support strangers because they may not be there when you need them. But it also is building our self-esteem and our self-confidence. We don't have to uh, lie to each other, support each other in a way that we teach them negative and tell them when they're wrong, they're right. No, what we need to do is to um, assist them to do the right thing next time. Making a mistake is a, a human element. And sometimes it actually is our best element because we can correct it. Doing the same thing over and over is not a good thing. So when we see our, our, our own doing wrong things, we need to be able to sit down and talk to them in a different environment so we can all be on the same page. 
Because when we help each other, we're actually helping ourselves. You know, if I help you up a ladder when you get to the top and I need help, it's more likely you'll help me than if I didn't help you. It's a human reaction. So it's, you know, the you, you old saying, uh, you know, we need a pat on the back at time. And we all do. And we all need support. Um, our culture seem to be think that we are, um, we could do everything by ourselves. Nobody does. Everyone that's successful have some mentor or someone that assists them. And I normally tell my boxers, I said, listen, you could be the greatest athlete in the world. If nobody fund you and give you an opportunity to, to perform and to use your talent, you will never be anything because nobody will ever see you. Mm -hmm. So everything we do in life, everyone that's successful, every business venture have someone that invested in you. Mm -hmm. And we need to invest in ourselves. It's big. Yeah. Um, so do you know why in our community we are lacking there in that department, investing in ourselves, investing within each other? You know what? I'm not going to knock anyone, but I do believe it comes from home. Um, mm -hmm. I was very fortunate that I had a grandparents. Uh, I was raised by my grandparents. And I can tell you at a young age, I felt all the time like I was a prince. I always felt like I was worth something. I've never heard my grandparents say you're not, you're worthless or you're this. They've always instilled love, care, and also how important I was. And I think uh, I can, if I can advise anyone, and again, it's purely my opinion. If I can advise any parent is to instill as much love and care and hope in their kids as possible. You know, my son Joshua, for me, was a kid. He was told all the time, you are the best. You can do whatever you want. Don't let nobody stop you. You are your, only you can stop yourself. And when they went to school, any teacher that would ever tell them they can't do something, I would be right in their office the next day and said, don't ever, ever, ever do it again. And I was very strict in that because there is something called commanding respect. When people do wrong things, you have to make sure they realize and don't do it again. And I think the black community needs to tell people who are limiting their kids' success not to do it. Because a lot of our kids are fed a lot of garbage. Oh, you, can't, you shouldn't be a doctor. You shouldn't be this. You, a kid can be whatever they want. And a school and anyone else is supposed to assist that journey, not restrict it. But we sometimes allow people... So a, a parent may think, oh, the teacher knows best. Your child knows best. Your child knows what they want. You know, as a young person, I remember a lot of time my friends would say stuff to me and I look at them and I go, no. And they said, what do you mean no? I go, this is my life. I, it's my, this is the wit's life. Like they'd say, you want to do this? And I go, no. And they'd say stuff like, you're a coward. And I go, no, I'm not a coward. I don't want to do that. And nobody can make me. And, uh, you know, as I get older, they look at me and they go, you're the guy that I always know you. And I go, yeah, it's only me. It's my life. And now I'm also willing to take the risks if I make mistakes to correct them. But you got to be willing to invest in you and believe in you. And a lot of people have a problem with that. Like when I hear about, you know, people talk about like peer pressure. There's no peer pressure. Nobody can make you do what you don't want to do. If, they, if you don't want to do it, just say no or yes. But don't blame anyone if you do it because you made that choice. So we need to instill at home. We gotta, I know sometimes through finance, through all kinds of things, we get frustrated. But I, even Joshua, I remember when he was young, like uh, I would come home and he said, Dad, can you lie with me for two minutes? There is no way, don't care how I'm feeling, that I can't lie with my son for two minutes. There's nothing in the world that can give me. And after a minute, he said, all right, you can go. <laughs> you know, but I can't even imagine ever saying no. It's such a simple request. Two minutes. So I think parents have to just take a look at, because you only have a short time with them before they don't want to be with you anymore. Like by the time they're 10 or 11, they got their own friends. So you have a short period of time, you know, take advantage of it. Yeah. And those years will really pay off. Spend time with them. Mm -hmm. um, so very, very good advice. Huge advice. Um, what advice would you have for the youths? 
Okay. The youths are, um, they need leadership. And uh, what I can advise them is that it's their world. Um, don't let others limit their potential. Um, they need to find positive role models and positive things to look at. So right now on social media, the internet, um, YouTube, there's a lot of positive stuff. So if you go on YouTube and you put in, I want to be the greatest on anything, you'll be amazed what shows up. Um, how do I build my confidence? How do I, whatever you want, just ask YouTube. Whatever you want to do, just ask Google. Google, how do I do this? It's like an open book. Sure. And it's there. Now, if you don't have access to computer, you can go to the library, which is complimentary. And so a lot of kids are lost because they're trying to fit in and be like their friends. It's really, really key for them to understand that they're special and that they're not, they don't have to be like their friends. Because a lot of times their friends wish they were them. And they're trying to be like their friends, you know, so they need to find, you know, try to follow positive role models. So ones that are successful, because success is a lot better path than not success. And there's a lot of positive role models in our community from the LeBron James to many other athletes who are doing really well, who our athletes can model themselves after. And also not to, not to listen to negative thoughts, you know, not to let people tell them what they can and can't do. Because the, the one thing we know about humanity is we're, we're capable of enormous things. Whatever we choose to do, we do very well when we make our mind up to do it. Very true. Very true. Um, so what keeps you motivated? I mean, you're running this studio, you've got these boxers, you've got your son coming up here, you know, how do you keep going? Well, to be honest, my clientele keeps me motivated because I, I'm in the gym seven in the morning and I can't imagine them showing up at seven, I'm not there. So when you, um, when you help people, they in return help you back. So Joshua has a huge fan base of, um, not just fans, but he has a, some sponsorship group. And majority of them come from my membership. I have some clients who do well for themselves. And in return, uh, they said, whatever we can do to help Joshua. But that is because I've invested in them. And so I can't imagine not showing up for my clients. So sometime when we're not selfish, we think about others, it reflects back on us. Because when, when they make an appointment to see Dewitt Frazier, I'm going to be there. And if I'm not going to be there, there has to be something drastic happen. And I will inform them as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. So there is someone I tell my boxer about their DNA. When people can rely on you, you become a source of a part of who they are. So what I mean is they, when people can rely on you, they don't have any doubts. They know if you said yes, it's yes. No, it's no. And that's a huge DNA to have. And I have that DNA. I've always been this way from I was young. Super important reliability. That's big. yeah. Well, yeah. accountability. Like so, okay. I normally say to my boxers, in order to be successful, you need to be accountable. And what that means is that when people can rely on you and you're accountable for your actions. So, if I am late, that's on me. If I don't show up, that's on me. If something goes wrong, that's on me. A lot of people seem to always try to be blaming others for their own action, and that that is actually showing you that you're not accountable because only you know the truth. You can tell, you can blame people for anything you want. Right. But when you go to bed at night and when you're in a room by yourself, you know who you are. So when you learn to be accountable, people respect that because people know you don't blame them for your error. And it's amazing the reaction people do toward you. Like I have no problem telling someone I'm sorry. It's easy for me because if I am, I am. And uh, I think a lot of people have, have a lot of problem with that. So if you do something wrong, just own up to it. You know, I, I see politicians all the time. They, they get caught in something. And instead of just saying, I did it, they do everything to say. And then finally, all right, I did. And that, by that time, you lose all respect. 
True. People can forgive you if you are open and honest and ask for forgiveness. But if you keep saying, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Don't keep saying you're right. Because it's not going to get better. It just gets worse. <laughs> you know, so um, I show up because, I, first of all, I love life. I love uh, helping others. Um, and my, at time, I think I'm more like a psychologist than I am a coach. Because sometimes I go to the gym, all my clients want to do is talk. <laughs> You know, rather it be about their wife, their coworker, themselves. I'm thinking, I should have been a psychologist. I hear they'd be better <laughs> and a lot less physical. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that means you're accountable, right? They know that they can yes. talk to you and yeah. rely on you for not only for a good workout, but for that mental part. Because I guess, um, how do you tie in like mental and physical? Do they both tie into when you have to be like an athlete? Is it important to have a mental, strong mental and a strong physical? The mental has to be stronger than the physical. Mm -hmm. So they say your will has to be stronger than your skill wow. because it doesn't matter how skillful you are. There will be people trying to stay and get in your way to break your will. And you have to be, so, you know, they say the, the pen is mightier than the sword. And what that mean is there's always going to be people trying to tell you, you're not as good as you are. You're not as talented as you are, or you can't do this. And you have to take those things as personal challenges. So like as a young age, people used to tell me things all the time. And I look at them and I'm thinking to myself, who are they talking to? <laughs> it's not me. Like, that's their own negative. Uh, I have no idea what they're talking about. Like, right. tell me what I can't do and can do. Like, they don't know who I am. Like, they don't know my capability. So um, the, the will has to be stronger than the skill. There is no doubt. You know, if you ask any coach that's been coaching long enough, they'll tell you anyone of the, of the will to succeed, they are more important than the one with the skill. Because skill... A lot of people are talented at many things, but if their mindset is not strong, it will be broken and they can't focus. When you have a strong will, you can turn anyone into on your side. You can, you can change them. You know, you can make them, you can mentally break them where they become your fan. You know, so, but I think that is, that is instilling you in how you believe in yourself. So first of all, a lot of people, like for instance, being black, a lot of people think that uh, the lighter skin is more important than the darker skin. They're both the same. You know, I have, I've been very fortunate to meet a lot of very important people in my life. And I can tell you, even a guy like Pinball Clemens, when I meet Pinball Clemens to see his size, I couldn't believe this is the guy who used to watch play football on TV. He's so small. But when he walks in a room, he's huge because his voice, his mannerism, I have no negative in it. You know, and he's not the only one. I've met other people who, I met a gentleman once who was a very financially very wealthy. And the first time I met him, I was blown away because he looked so average. But when he spoke, you knew he was special. But if you had seen him walking along the street, you'd go, ah, oh, there's some guy walking along the street. But when you sit down and you talk to him, you know, when he said yes, he means yes. When he said no, he means no. He doesn't give you any in-between. He doesn't maybe, it's very firm. It's yes or no. And so what I've learned from that is looks and physical thing is very important because, you know, when they say easy on the eyes, you know, like my son, I say to him all the time, I wish I were you, you know, it's easy on the eyes. It's a, it's a, it's a first attraction. <laughs> but after that comes the what's inside. So they say you can open door for someone, but what do you do when you walk in that door? So, you know, sometimes my people look at themselves, they walk in a room and they think they're not as pretty as the white picture. But when you, when you know what you're doing, I've been in room with a lot of pretty people. And I can tell you, I've been offended because when you believe in yourself, you can make people, you know, I went to play golf yesterday, and as soon as I walked in, there was a white man waiting for me. And he said to me, you are a good golfer. And I said, but you have never met me. He said, your walk 
And he said, you walk confident. <laughs> I go, well, you got to look the part. <laughs> you know, but it's true. Your mannerism and your, you have to believe in yourself because a lot of people can change that and make you don't believe in yourself. But you have to have that in you at all times, wherever you go, you belong. Yes. And I think our